Hey everyone, it's Katerina with Meet Fuel Living and it's pretty early in the morning here at 6.30 in the morning. So let's talk a little bit quieter so hopefully you can hear everything okay. So I'm going to make some meatloaf. I thought that it would be a really good kind of something different um, to have, you know, instead of just like the regular ground beef that I just cook in a frying pan. Um, with butter all the time. I have a couple packs of this. It's just regular ground beef. I got it from an actual a local uh, farm here in Colorado. Um, but I have two pounds of that. Of course, my handy dandy bowl that I will put it in in my pan. And then there's a few other things that I do. Of course, you know, you're going to need your eggs. And then I use... I like this pork panko. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. This stuff is expensive. All of these pre-made pork pankos are expensive, but I do like this one because it has a, some smoke flavoring to it. You can also use just some of these and just go ahead and crush them up. The only thing about pork uh, rinds that you have to be really careful of is some of them are not, like this one is just pork rinds and salt, probably can't see that, but some of them have all other kinds of stuff in them, flavors, natural flavors, um, and I don't know what that is. So I, you know, just be really careful when you're buying them that it's got ingredients in that you you know you want but you could do that or like I said I do like this one because it's got a little bit of smoke flavoring added to it let's see oh, they also have an Italian one but the Italian one has a lot more stuff in it and I'm not just talking about the seasonings it's got like I think maltodextrin and stuff in it um, of course some Italian seasoning um, I like to have a little bit of Italian seasoning in mine and then I do some Parmesan cheese now um, of course, I have also over here some beef butter, which is literally just tallow. This one is from Carnivore Crisps. I absolutely love it, but I have beef tallow from The Butcher, and I have beef tallow from Billy Doe Meats, and um, love them all. And I'm only going to use this to just kind of grease the pan, and the reason why is this is a new bread pan I haven't used yet. Um, I left a lot of my bakeware and stuff like that actually back in Texas. So I just want to make sure that it doesn't stick to this pan. So I'm going to coat it a little bit with this and then I'm going to top it with bacon, a few pieces of bacon. And there's also an option if meatloaf, um, if you, you know, a lot of people put like ketchup or tomato sauces on top of your meatloaf. Um, I do have this organic unsweetened one from Primal Kitchen. And if you know, one of the people that likes to add, because I looked up some recipes for meatloaf and I saw a lot that would have like ketchup with brown sugar mixed together as the topping or the glaze. There is actually this Truvia Sweet Complete brown sugar. So I believe it's just, yeah, it's stevia with a hint of molasses. Again, these are not clean or 100% perfect carnivore or anything like that, but if you're doing like keto or ketovore or things like that, yeah, and or you're okay with doing this, then by all means make it the way that you want to make it. I absolutely am not the carnivore police, and I'm trying to get two teenage boys to eat this kind of stuff instead of the junk that they normally do. So whatever I can do to make it better for them, I'm gonna do. And of course, I have my regular Redmond salt, and depending on how you like it seasoned, maybe you don't want to put the parmesan in or whatever i have been using this lately i don't know if anybody else has tried this and i'm going to tell you it's expensive i'll put a link to it uh in my amazon links uh in case you want to try it this little bag is really quite expensive but what i like about this is this is this is organs this is uh freeze-dried, powdered liver, spleen, kidney, heart, and pancreas, along with onion, redmond salt, smoked paprika, lemon peel, garlic, parsley, mustard seed, and thyme. And we're about to have a visitor here. You, you can't help. Uh, you need to go. This, I don't know if you can see him well. This is Ting Ting. This is one of my boy's cats. And he has to check everything out. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna move him off of here real quick, but coffee this morning anyways um i guess if he stays there that's going to be okay as long as he doesn't come down here by the food <clears throat> 
So these are all the ingredients that I'm going to use to make my meatloaf. And then of course my oven has a thermometer like built into it. So I'm going to actually put this in there with the thermometer in it. And when the, the meatloaf reaches uh, about 160 is when I'm going to pull it out and let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes before I cut into it. My oven is actually preheated to 375. It's actually on regular bake, not convection bake. So just regular bake 375. I guess that's the ice maker making the noise, not the oven. So anyways, I'm gonna be using this. So I'm gonna uh, move the camera over so that you can see you know, everything that I'm putting in here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get it in the oven and then come back when it's done so you can see what it looks like. So let me move this. All right, you can probably see over there in the corner the other orange cat. We have two orange cats. I'm gonna put gloves on because I have some cuts and stuff on my hand and I just wanna, you know, make sure that it stays sanitary. All right, so I'm gonna put these two packs of meat into this bowl and then we're just gonna start throwing everything else in there, so. So, do you see this? Do you see this stain right here? I just random. These are brand new knives. These are those beautiful, um, I think they're the Drew Barrymore ones from Walmart. I also have a set of the Ninja Never Dolls, which I absolutely love. But when we first moved here, I couldn't find my knives anywhere. I thought I labeled the box, but I honestly couldn't find them. And so I can't be without knives, you know, I mean, not, not as a carnivore. So I went and picked up these knives and I thought they're really cute. You know, they're white. They're going to be great. No, do not get them. If you have any type of ingredient in your kitchen that might stain, because just from sitting in the sink, the handles of all of them have stained. You told me there'd be better days and nothing that can pull us under. You want to take the pain away. Okay, so got the meat in there, and then I'm going to put two eggs in there. Now, I don't know if two eggs is going to be enough, and unfortunately, I don't have exact measurements. I'm going to tell you what I put in there, and then we're going to decide whether or not that is good enough, but I just don't, I never really know. I have to, like, squish it together and feel the texture of it, I, and I know that's horrible because you're going to want, like, a, a recipe, but I'm going to start with about... A cup and a half of this pork panko <clears throat> and it sticks together so check out my I got these a couple years ago these Valentine's Day cups I thought they were so cute in my other kitchen I used to have um, and I still have like a bar that had like all the stuff that would hang off of it and those just be part of my decorations and then I'm going to put, I buy this Parmesan from uh, Sam's Club, typically. It's about a cup. I mean, I, it's not really, I don't really, I mean, you see, it's not really easy to measure. And then just a little extra. I got to be honest with you, I hate the way Parmesan smells. I don't know why, I just don't like it. And then I'm guessing, again, this is just regular Italian seasoning. Uh, if you can't do seasons, I don't even know if that showed up. probably was out of camera. If you can't do seasonings, don't put this in there. They don't seem to bother me. And I'm going to start with just maybe about a tablespoon and a half. I like Italian seasoning. It doesn't bother me. Like I said, I don't have any issues with it. So I'm good with... Um, putting it in there and I'm going to add a little bit of this I do because it's I realize that the amount that I'm adding is probably not going to be enough to make a difference but it's like a seasoned salt and it's organs and so I figure it can't hurt right it can't hurt anything at all and then of course just I just got to sprinkle some salt in here and then I'm going to add the eggs and I'm going to go ahead and again this is you see I use this quite a bit this is all this is is beef tallow it's just tallow I have other types of tallow all of it is good um got some new gloves on here uh, I'm just going to grease this pan because like I said I 
I think this is a higher, um, like leaner meat, and so it's not gonna be as fatty, number one. And I don't want it to stick to this new pan. Uh, this is just something that um, I haven't really used. But know that I was born as a fighter. The bacon is also going to help with that. Um, the fat, I think the bacon will probably make it really, again, it's probably a step that you don't have to do. I just did it. And now I'm just gonna mix this together. And again, I'm gonna cook this in the oven at 375, and I'm thinking it's gonna take around 60 to 70 minutes. Uh, that's 375 Fahrenheit. Um, I, I think it's going to take that long, but I'm going to put the thermometer in there and I'm going to tell it that I want it to be, you know, when it, right in the center, I'm going to want it to be 160. But we're better than that. We're better than that. I know, you know, so we Good. So anyways, this is mixed up pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure real quick and then I'm just gonna stick it in this pan and then we're gonna top it with some bacon put the thermometer in it and get it going I put some catnip down on the floor for the cats so that they'll stay down there because the Ting Ting thinks that he needs to be up here watching what I'm doing and just gonna push it down and then uh, I'm gonna put some bacon on top so now again I'm just gonna choose a few pieces of bacon so if you're gonna do like your ketchup or if you want to mix the ketchup with the, the brown sugar you can add that as well um, I'm actually gonna put that on um, after because I'm gonna make up a little sauce for the kids, but I'm not gonna have any of the sauce on mine So I'm gonna cook it this way I'm gonna take this guy and I got my thermometer here and then I'm gonna put one six zero is the temperature I want my thermometer and it's at currently at 66 so so I'm actually working on a few other things today that's going to be meal prep for the coming week because you probably already know that I fell off the wagon really bad and have been off the wagon for, well, since Christmas. And while I haven't been, you know, eating salads and things like that, I've been eating a bunch of stuff that I'm not supposed to. So my thing is meal prep. I have, well, you know what? I have a bunch of other things going on here, so um, I'll be doing those videos as well since I'm in the kitchen. But anyways, we're gonna come back to this when it's done, um, and then I'll show you what it looks like, and then we're gonna taste it. So my stove, actually, I've already opened it to double check just to be sure that this was ready because, um, you know, just wanting to make sure. But my stove will actually either cook over, look at my old beat up. <laughs> I think it's time for new ones. Uh, my stove will actually shut it, uh, go to a warm function or it'll shut itself off depending on what um, I tell it to do. But I just wanted to double check that this thing was done. So unfortunately it's already kind of um, clicked over. However, I wanted the inside of this to be 160 degrees. And just to verify, even though I already know that my stove is fine, I checked this as well and it just the battery is almost dead but you see it's gonna right there it's a 160.7 the battery keeps trying to die on me so anyways uh, let me show you what it looks like and I didn't need to I could have got away with not greasing it up with tallow because you see, I don't know if you can see all that grease in there. Ooh, I'm gonna leave it in there too. It smells amazing. It looks amazing. I'm gonna let it sit, even though it is swimming in grease. I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and then I'm gonna cut into it to taste it, but this is actually gonna go in the refrigerator because this is, gonna, this is part of my meal prep, so. 
that is done. Okay, so I know you can't see me, but the meatloaf is nice and cool. Now, generally, you're going to eat this like, you know, 10 and 15 minutes after it's out of the oven. But I um, am making this for meal prep. And so I wanted it to cool so that I can cut it into slices and then put it in a container in the refrigerator. We're going to actually check it out real quick. And it comes out of here rather easily because it has been sitting and it is nice and room temperature. I'm going to actually cut this into slices and then I'm going to, um, you know, put it in the refrigerator. But I just wanted you to see what it was going to look like and how I make a big mess here when I'm trying to cut it. So apparently I can't cut it without it falling apart. But... Look, I'm going to try it. <coughs> oh, my God. That is so good. So good. So these are just the little meal prep containers that I'm going to actually put this stuff into. But I'm going to, I believe, flip this upside down. I think I can probably cut it better that way. Nope, it's exactly the same. Still falling apart. <clears throat> it's probably to do with the fact that my knife is not real sharp. You know, just cringe. And that's probably a decent sized piece of bread. Just gonna put pieces in these containers and Broken all up and everything, but it is what it is, I guess. I snuck another piece, guys. Not pretty, but you know, it is what it is. That's my saying. Two. Looks like we'll get this one is actually a really large piece right here. And so that's going to be plenty. Well, it's already the end of the day. And I had recorded um, an outro uh, in the kitchen while I was working out there on all the food. Because the meatloaf that I made today in this video is actually part of a large meal prep that I did for the coming week or weeks. Um, and it ended up being so long just for the meatloaf that I didn't want to make an hour long YouTube video. I thought I would go ahead and just end it at the meatloaf and then I will pick up uh, the rest of the meal prep for a separate video so that you're not having to sit in front of a video for a long time. But that recipe for the meatloaf is not my recipe. I didn't make it myself. It's a recipe or a combination of things that I have seen on the internet um, for the carnivore diet and that I've just kind of adapted to myself over the course of this period that I've been trying the carnivore diet. Um, it's, it's really just an adaptation of the meatball recipe that I've been using, but it is a hit in this house, even for my picky eaters. So I'm going to actually post the recipe in the amounts um, on my um, actual web page in the blog so that if you want the recipe, you can go ahead and get it from there. Otherwise, I hope you'll try it. It is very, very good. If you like the tomato sauce, do that ketchup, do the ketchup and then maybe that swerve brown sugar. Um, if that's something that you can do, uh, you can leave the Italian seasoning out. Like I said, if it isn't something like if you're not doing seasoning, some people only do salt. Some people can do salt and white pepper, but they can't do everything else. So, you know, you can customize that to fit, you know, your needs. The other thing that I really like about that meatloaf recipe, and it's probably all meatloaf, I don't know, but it tastes really good cold. Like I've gone in the refrigerator the next day and pulled a piece out and just ate it cold. And so, I mean, I don't know if that's weird or not, but I really like to do that. I, I don't know if recipes or this type of stuff are things that people like to see. Um, I just thought since I'm already going to be out there and since I failed so miserably over the Christmas holidays and the new year that um, I wanted to really just get back into meal prep. And I thought this was a perfect opportunity to show people what I'm doing to get back on track. 
Um, it's been kind of a long day and I'm looking a little, a little hairy and rough right now, but I wanted to get all this stuff done because my grandbaby's coming over tonight and he's going to stay the night with his Gigi and that way I can just devote all of my time to him tomorrow. I usually do meal preps on Sunday, but Anyways, um, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Comment down below if you like this type of stuff, if you want more of this kind of thing, um, uh, any other suggestions that you think I might try. If you are just tuning in for the first time, thank you so much for coming along on my journey here, going from a whole food plant-based vegan for basically my whole adult life <laughs> to a carnivore abruptly just like that. Um, but like I said, if you're new here, thank you so much for being here for watching my video I'd love it if you would like comment share and subscribe uh, doing that helps me get my story out to more people and I'm trying to reach out to people who are going through the similar things that I was going through absolutely if you feel like this is something that interests you I would love it if you would at the very least subscribe and if you are a current subscriber thank you so much thank you for supporting me thank you for being here and constantly lifting me up when I'm falling down and I love you and I'll see you on the next video but until then eat your meat